With Wrath launch coming next week, everyone needs to start looking at what they're going to do to move on into Northrend and how they're going to get from level 70 to 80 as quick as they possibly can or necessarily what route they would like to do. Now, there's two things in particular I really want to talk about. Today, we're going to focus on the pre-questing and getting ready now with things you can do this week in order to get yourself up to level 71 instantly on launch. And then in the next video, I'll be talking about the leveling route you want to be doing if it's either questing, if it's mob grinding, or if it's a dungeon route. So today we're focusing primarily on pre-questing. There's a lot of guides and spreadsheets out there, but on top of going over just those, today I'd really like to look at the exact quest hubs that'll make it just easy for you if you don't want to go through the entirety of fully preparing your character. There's a few locations in the game where you can get a ton of XP and just get those done and out of the way before moving on to Northrend. So with that being said, let's dive right in. Now first I'm going to show you guys some of the guides that are really phenomenal to use. This one right here from Black Smoke is beautiful. It shows you your entire route as well as it has the Alliance preferred routes. It has the Horde preferred routes, the breakdowns of all of the XP you can get past Black Smoke's guides. We also have Thames guide, which will show you a lot of amazing things where you're getting about 1.3 million XP. So you're automatically going to be level 71 when you start leveling. We also have Jamie's guide as well as Take Notes guide. Of course, one of the easier ones to follow if you don't want to go through an exact spreadsheet yourself and track everything yourself is always going to be the rested XP guide and just the pre-patch guide will get you to 71 and it'll give you about 1.7 million XP and this is the guide I have been using and the one that I really like because it literally gives you a step-by-step -step breakdown of how you're going to want to do all of the quests you even get this little beautiful arrow that you can follow where you're doing all of these steps in order you can see that my next step is to accept this quest now the arrow is going to tell me exactly where to go to do the next part of the quest. A lot of YouTubers and streamers always promote this guide. It is because we do get a kickback from it, to be brutally honest, but it's also because it's just so well put together. And it will also have a leveling guide from 70 all the way to 80 that you will follow. The only issue is that all of these guides are aimed towards fresh level 70 characters, and they also do the exact most. What I mean from that is these are anticipating that you are going into things like Mag Theradon's lair and getting the Mag's head for yourself to turn in. Also getting full reputation with things like Hydral so you can turn in all of the Hydral rep quests. But what if you just want something simple? What if you don't want to focus on every single thing you can do, but just do a little bit of prep to set yourself ahead before you go into Northrend? Okay, so the first quest hub that I want to suggest is the Auchindon, Auchindon, I don't know how to pronounce it, but right here as well as Shatrath. So these zones are so close to each other, you can get a lot of the quests done within an afternoon. A lot of these actually require you to do the dungeons, so you can do one quick dungeon run right here and you'll get a ton of XP, as well as doing things like the dailies, like the PvP daily and the dungeon dailies in Shatrath, as well as the other quests in Shat. Just doing these two little sections right here will net you almost half a million XP. So this is absolutely the highest XP you can get per one little quest hub, which is technically two quest hubs, but they're so close to each other that even if you just did this little section, you're getting a crazy amount of experience. Just to add to this, if you're only doing just this little section and you haven't done the quests already, you might as well throw in the quest from Stonebaker Hold or also Scenarian Thicket. Just fill up your quest log as fast as you can and just knock out just this area. Netherstorm is one of the craziest places possible to get your quest done. In particular, I'm talking about Kirin Var Village, but if you do have the quest quests available, you can also do Area 52 and the Eco Dome, where you can just do a quick little loop and turn in a crazy amount of quests. Now in the Kirinvar village itself, there's like five different quest items that drop off of these mobs that you're seeing in the background that you can just hold onto in your inventory or in your bank and have them with you on launch and accept the quest item, turn in the quest, get free experience from this. Just Kirinvar village alone is about 74,000 XP, and this is pretty much just an instant turn in. You can have all of the quests done already and just get this huge boost of the experience. The next quest hub you're going to look at if you haven't done it already is going to be Zanger Marsh's southwest side. This is going to be Sporagar and if you can just any of the quests right around there, especially including the Count Ungula's Mandible. This is another drop quest which is really nice to just have in your inventory because even if you have 25 quests already completed, you can just accept this one and turn it in instantly. Sporagar can net you 115,000 experience, which is crazy 
crazy to think about just how easy it is to get that much XP from one little area in the zone. That being said, if you haven't done any of the quests in Zanger Marsh, you can also net around 60 to 70,000 more experience from just turning in the quests on the east side, depending on if you're Horde or Alliance. Alliance actually get about 12,600 more experience than Horde in this zone, but it's just a quick and easy zone to turn in, and that brings this entire zone to almost 180,000 experience just for doing this little zone and flying through it really quickly. One quick note about Sporgar is that you do need to farm your reputations up to neutral. Actually, you kind of want to avoid getting friendly. Just get neutral and then you can move on. My next suggestion, if you haven't done them, is going to be Thralmar and Honor Hold. These quest HUDs can actually net crazy amounts of experience with their high level quests as well as with PvP quests. If you knock out everything in these HUDs, you can get 130k from Honor Hold and about 107,000 XP from Thralmar alone. Now these are some of the locations where you've probably done most of the quests, so we're going to move on to the next one pretty quickly. The Alteric Valley Turn-Ins. If you have been farming your AV, you could have been doing all of the quests for AV. And this is a very simple thing that most people haven't done or turned in the quest for yet, but it could easily net you above 60,000 experience. The only downside I would see is that it's a little bit out of the way. Although if you're a death knight, you can use death's gate and fly over pretty quickly. It is again, a little bit out of the way for your leveling route. And then my two honorable mention locations are gonna be your daily locations. Your main daily quest hubs are gonna be Netherwing's Ledge as well as the Isle of Quell de Loss right outside of Sunwell for your Shattered Sun offensive dailies. You can knock out all of these dailies really quickly and they're very easy. For Shattered Sun offensive, you can grab them all right now. For the actual Netherwing one, you kind of need to do a pre-quest as well as do some of the quests to get to friendly. So if you wanna pick up more quests you do need to have more reputation. Make sure you don't turn in any of the one-time quests though, things like the Netherwing Egg, because that's gonna be a free quest to turn in for extra XP on launch. These locations anyone can do, even if you've already filled out your entire quest from everywhere in Outland. And this is probably something you've done if you were farming gold through questing. But realistically guys, the raid doesn't even launch for at least a week into Wrath launch. So you don't really need to rush too hard to get to level 80. Although the only thing that's a caveat there would be your Sons of Hodir rep. You do kind of want to rush up to 80 and start farming those dailies to make sure that you do have your enchants on Nax launch. Thanks for watching, guys. And if you want to know anything else about Wrath of the Lich King, of course, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you all on the next one.